sitting here in the front. She is uh, Singapore's foremost sexologist. Um, she's the author of a few books, Love, Sex, and Everything in Between, as well as Orgasmic Yoga, very recently. I think she's working on her third one at the moment, maybe. Um, yeah, you ready? Okay. Oh, and the timer. She's very keen to, to stay on the timer. Okay. Do you want to use the control? So I'm not going to try to project my voice. Uh, and so I just want your help. What's this word over here? No, just just this part. Louder? This part. F U C K. No, no, no. Just just F U C K. Okay, I'm not going to continue if you guys don't say this word. So everybody, where are you? Okay, great. So let's do it together, okay? One, two, three. Fuck! Okay. So I'm a sexologist. I, I love fucking. Uh, I really do. I really do. And uh, that's why I became a sexologist in the first place. I got sick and tired of all these negative messages that I was hearing about sex all the time. And uh, I decided to stand up for sex. And uh, uh, yeah, I suck. Right. Okay. So, okay. And uh, this is uh, terrible. Uh, we need to go back. Okay. So, I have three uh, F words that I really like. Uh, the first one you already know. And um, I've also been told that my workshops are really fun and I'm quite funny. I try to be. I like laughing. I like maybe making people laugh. And uh, a big part of making people laugh is because I, even though I really love fucking, uh, and this is my work, I, I don't really take myself that seriously because I really truly believe that sex is supposed to be fun. And when you approach something that you are very passionate about so seriously, people get scared. And so I, I because I believe it should also be fun, so people just think I'm funny. I'm not really that funny, actually, but you're allowed to laugh. And uh, I have a problem with the thing again because I keep pressing the wrong thing and uh, this shouldn't happen because I keep going back. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's a big fuck up as you can see. And uh, yeah, I need counseling. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, I'm back. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, this is not even funny. Okay, I'm just going to use this. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm really not good with that thing. Okay, so uh, why I became a sexologist, I already mentioned I love sex and I love helping people. And uh, what's, what's even better than that? Getting paid for it. That's why I, I, I do it. And people ask me again and again and again. And I always tell them the same answers and they don't believe me. They want to hear the long story. So uh, they, when they ask me, I just say, uh, I do what I do because I love helping people. And then sometimes I just say I do it because I love sex. Uh, I haven't gotten to, I do it because I just want to be paid. It's not true. Because if I wanted to be just paid for what I do, I think that lots of things that I can be doing that would earn me far more. And that's not what I do. What? That's not why I do what I do. Okay, so three uh, job misconceptions that I face again and again. And uh, this really started when I started be becoming a sec uh, announcing to the world that I'm a sexologist. I really didn't know what to expect because I'm, I'm the first one in Singapore. So I really didn't know what to expect. And then uh, I would get someone booking an appointment and sound very official and, seri and serious and I'm really happy I have this new client and then they end off with so what oil will you be using? <laughs> so I don't do any touch on nudity in my work I definitely don't uh, sleep with my clients uh, using my body and I definitely don't sleep with them to teach them anything because I, I really believe that there are many ways you can teach someone without using your body and uh, I also believe that sex is sacred and I'm not going to use my body and uh, allow uh, myself to be penetrated 
knowing how sacred sex is. And um, so I do anything but have sex with my clients. And uh, actually that has helped me in my work because Singapore is a very conservative uh, society in a lot of ways. And if I had uh, done it, uh, not that I have issues with people who do it, uh, I have lots of friends who do it and colleagues who do it and I respect them for it, uh, but I am not going to do it, not because I have an issue with people who are, choose to do sex work, but because I believe that that's not what is right for me. So misconceptions. So some of uh, uh, fucked up beliefs that I actually learned along the uh, years because I've been doing this work for seven years and it hasn't been easy. The first one is uh, people always think that as long as you follow your passion, everything will be easy. I followed my passion and I am still living month by month. Every month I worry, am I going to earn enough to survive this month? And it has been seven years. Try doing something like what I'm doing for seven years, worrying every month for seven years, am I going to earn enough money for this month? Let's not even talk about next month. Two, because you're passionate about what you do, you try to do everything. And I was doing that because I don't have much money. I'm an entrepreneur. I do everything. And passion is supposed to drive it all. That's fucked up. Don't try to do it all. Don't try to do everything yourself. The moment you start a business, try to get out of the business. Try to get people to hire you, your friends. Try to be sustainable and not have to do this thing for seven years and worry about it every month. Three, I'm good at certain things I, that I didn't even know I was good at. I am not a very patient person by nature, but when I have someone who is in pain in front of me and I feel for them, I want to give them everything. I want to pour on my heart everything. I don't even care how much I'm in pain. I just want to help them in the shortest, fastest amount of time so they can get out of it, move on with their lives. I am good at what I'm doing. I am very good. I have had so much education, gotten so much training. I am good. But the problem is when you only focus on what you're good at, there are other things that you're not good at. Oh, I'm sorry, that's me. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I'm not very good at sales. So maybe you guys can help me. And uh, two years ago, I had this uh, guy come up to me. He wanted to collaborate with me. And then he just kind of passing remark, made a lot of sweeping statements. But one of the things that he said was, surely you are more ambitious than that. I'm like, who the fuck are you to tell me who I am? Like, I went and got this doctorate. I wanted to start this practice. I have started this practice. I am running my practice. I'm doing it the way I want. I am an entrepreneur. I don't report to anybody. I can fire my clients if I want. And you telling me that I should be more ambitious? Fuck you. Fuck you. And then I thought about it. Actually, what do I want now that I have fulfilled my ambition? Now that I'm an entrepreneur and I got all the things I wanted, all the things I ever dreamed of, start my own practice, help people, do it my way, everybody fuck off. He had a point. And I realized, actually, I didn't know what else I wanted. I never thought about it. I was too be busy getting out of my, for a long time, a depression. Because I, I was married and then I separated from my ex-husband and then finally got divorced last year. And uh, that actually took a toll on my emotions. And so I really didn't think about being ambitious because, come on, a lot of people just start something because they're passionate about it and they want to help people and save the world. But they don't really have a strategy. They don't really think about an exit. They don't really think about what will happen if they get burnt out. And uh, so these are three energy drainers for me. The first one is, oh, you're a sexologist, shouldn't you be very sexy? Oh, you're a sexologist. Whoa, you're the sexy sexologist. And then uh, for a while, I was very upset about being uh, expected to be sexy. And then I tried fighting it. And, I, and, and, and then I realized that actually I was not doing myself any favors because I didn't feel good. And it's less about what they think about me, it's also about how I feel about myself. Uh, second, uh, passive aggressive people. So uh, what I mean is not my clients because they can do whatever they want, I don't really care because I just want to help them. They can cry, they can scream, you know, whatever. I, I can put up with it because they're, first of all, they're paying me. And the next thing is because they're in pain. 
So I can put out with a lot of things, but what I cannot put out is with, is with people who claim to be my friends and then say, hey, by the way, uh, can you explain to me how to get a G-spot orgasm? Oh, that's a session, you know. You're trying to get a session out of me. So I try to say something like pretty vague and they're like, no, 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 tell me, tell me, teach me, teach me now, 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 no, no, no. no. <sighs> and then I have people who tell me, Oh, oh, oh. why wow, you're a sexologist? I want you to be my friend. Okay, okay, now I'm your friend. And then it's like, oh, now that you're a friend, tell me, tell me, what's your favorite position? What's your favorite, favorite this? What's your favorite, favorite that? What do you think about men who are this, this, this? And so they're really trying to... Oh, that's people user, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, saving grace. Uh, so there are three things that actually really saved me. Uh, when I was married, uh, my ex-husband really wanted me to take an off day and I didn't take an off day for two years. When I took my first off day, that was when I realized, oh wow, I really feel so much freer. I feel so much more energized and happy and rested and I'm actually more productive. So because I like my off day, so I had two off days and I ended up not taking two off days because I'm a workaholic. So I end up playing for one day and I feel so guilty because I played, uh, then I'll, I'll start uh, 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 having the second off day to actually work. So what I do is I started doing chunking. Uh, in chunking, what I do is today, the second day of my off day is my admin day. So everybody fuck off. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do all the things that I wish I could have done if I wasn't running around like a mad dog or a chicken without my head. Uh, helping everybody, right? Like somebody will want me uh, at 12, somebody will want me at night, somebody, you know, and then it, it doesn't feel good because I'm running around all the time. And so chunking really helped me. And the third thing that really helped me was having friends who are not people users. Friends who really, really, really love me unconditionally, show up at my events. I don't pay them. They help me. They tell me how much they love me. They put out with my nonsense. They put out with my passive aggressive behavior. They put, put out with me blaming and all kinds of other things. Uh, ultimately, my friends are real true gems that I really, really value so much. And uh, if not for them, and sometimes calling my bluff and telling me, okay, Martha, that's enough. Uh, you know, I, do, I don't think um, I would have been this uh, anchored. Uh, the next thing is, uh, so last year I got burnt out after seven years of doing everything myself and feeling stressed all the time about money and uh, not having a man and then feeling unattractive and getting depressed. Like, okay, I've been through quite a few rounds. Uh, uh, being burnt out was new. I, I, so I was a bit confused because I didn't feel like I had energy and yet I wasn't sad about my life. I just didn't feel like doing any work, that's all. And uh, this just dragged on and I thought that if I just was patient and just sit with it and be in the flow and just take the rest I need, then everything will work out. No, it just dragged on for months. So I would say for most of last year, I was burnt out and I didn't even know what burnt out was, right? Because I love my work so much. So how can you love your work so much, enjoy it, help the world and then be burnt out? So that was very, very strange for me because I was so confused and exercise didn't help. So, you, uh, I, so one of the things that helped me was patience. The second thing was uh, just do something. Uh, being patient wasn't enough. Uh, sleeping more didn't help. Watching more TV didn't help. Uh, reading didn't help. Uh, do something. So I started to do the things that actually made me feel joyful. And when I started to do that, my heart softened. And then I suddenly found myself crying. And then I realized I'd just been so tired for so long with nobody really helping me, being so scared all the time. That I really forgot to play. And uh, when you're at that level, you really need to come back to taking care of yourself and just stop trying to save the world and really treat yourself as the precious person you need to be. And uh, that's really so important when, you've, when you are being fucked around and you feel fucked up and uh, you're not doing enough fucking maybe. Uh, so uh, yeah, now questions. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so, yeah, 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 I do have this conclusion. Wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. So, uh, wait, you can clap later. Uh, so, when you feel uh, uh, fucked up, do not, this is my message, I don't have like this takeaway message thing. Um, so, when you feel fucked up and your life is truly, truly fucked up, do not ever, do not ever dumb down. Because that's when you feel, I'm a loser. I have nothing to contribute. 
I'm a piece of shit, I'm a loser. And this just goes on and on and on and on. And it's just a downward spiral. So don't let your fuck-ups, your past, affect you. So much so that you dumb down and you've got this stupid little thing and like, oh, I'm just one person, I can't save the world. I can't save the world. Well, the more you go on with such things, you really, truly become fucked up. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think this is the part you tell me how much you love me and uh, you're going to send clients to me. Oh, just one question. Hey, I cannot hear you. Will the bit of dumbing down be necessary? Like, sometimes they say you know, it's been the deepest relief to appreciate the life. Yeah, you're talking about uh, embracing your shadow. So you can embrace your deepest, darkest moments, but uh, don't ever think that you're stupid and uh, stop trying. I think that's my whole point. I think I have been through a lot of uh, dark moments, moments that are so dark that I didn't even know how I survived, but I just kept telling myself, uh, you know what, if shit happens, then it just makes you stronger, that things happen for a reason, uh, and uh, really, I, if you're at the crossroads and you can choose being negative or positive about it, you may not really feel very positive, but you just need to know that if you choose the other way, go on this downward spiral, then um, it really is the easier way. And uh, you stop being who you really are meant to be. So I have this big, big, big uh, belief uh, that I'm, I'm really here. I'm here at this moment. Not here, here, like fucked up nights. But like here on earth to help people. So if the more I wallow on my self-pity and all that stuff, then um, I'm not helping one more person. So uh, that's just part of the fucked up, but don't uh, dumb down. Mm, I am, uh, am I happy now? Yes. Uh, so I just finished this uh, prolonged sex date with myself where I uh, prolonged sex date with myself. So you can read it on my blog. Yeah, it's a really long blog post. And uh, essentially, I went through two A4 batteries and um, basically played with myself for 15 hours. And uh, uh, I, I wasn't doing it to like, create some world record, but because I truly believe that our orgasmic energy is a very powerful energy within ourselves. And as a sexologist, I was going to use this sexual energy to really heal myself and love myself in a way that I never did before. And that really taught me a lot, that experience. I had an epiphany. So you, you can read about it because uh, I'm sure uh, some of you may have other questions. Hi. Uh, so with services, services like Tinder, right, do you think it helps or makes sex worse? Uh, so there are people who are on Tinder to hook up. And they are on, on Tinder to make a friend. And there are people on Tinder to look for a relationship. And I'm on Tinder, actually. And uh, when people say they want to meet up to uh, have a one-night stand or fling, I, I don't judge anybody who wants to do that. Uh, I just don't want to do that. So I'm OK with making a, a friend. And so I believe that any apps can be used for good or for other purposes. Uh, it's really your choice. I think a lot of people think that uh, just because somebody wants to have sex with you or somebody uh, likes you or some, you know, like pressurizes you for sex, you have to say yes. So I don't feel any more less powerful just because I'm on Tinder and somebody asks me for sex and I say no. I don't let their abuse uh, get to me personally because I'm just standing on my, up for myself and saying no. So I don't really see like the problem is Tinder. I don't really see it that way. I guess it's now Thing. I mean, well, how, I mean how, how do you differentiate that and your desires? Because you're still human, right? Yeah. Don't you have desires? Yeah, of course. And how do you approach it? I'm not, oh, uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, 
I'm not masturbating to escape being in a relationship or masturbating because I'm depressed. I'm, I'm using it to love myself in a different way. You can masturbate to porn. You can masturbate to yourself in a very mindful way. And uh, both of them, you get what you want, which is you have an orgasm perhaps. But uh, the way you do it is very different. The intention behind it uh, is different. So when I go on my, when, went on this uh, prolonged sex date with myself uh, and uh, used sexual energy to heal myself and to love myself in a way that I never have, uh, it, it really helped me to really truly understand uh, the link with that and with happiness. Yes? I'm just curious. Uh, it, sound, it sounds like you at times faced adversity in terms of balancing your kind of going for your passions and your career goals with your personal life. And I'm just curious, looking back on it, like how you advise someone to approach someone in that dilemma and you know, what you kind of went through. So I really truly value all the ups and downs in my personal life because they help me to ask deeper questions of who am I? What do I want? What will make me happy? And every time I became stronger for it, my work became better. And uh, every time I was working through something, I started attracting clients who were also working through similar issues. So when I was working on my femininity and you know, like get out of my yoga pants and really work and be comfortable with being a woman and being an attractive woman, when I worked on that, I attracted women who wanted to work on their femininity. So I really believed that there was no coincidence. What was happening in my personal life was also happening in my professional life. And, and, and so people like to compartmentalize things and, and say that's work-life balance. I really want to say that people who are not in integrity in their professional or personal lives are also not in integrity, usually in another area. So I, I, I'm a true strong believer of not asking people to do what I myself would not do. I don't tell people to exercise if I don't exercise. I don't tell people to do affirmations or masturbate or uh, love themselves if I can't do it. So uh, I, I do it because um, I really see and I've heard again, 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 all my clients who benefited and, you know, like healed so quickly because, because they, they, they felt that um, I was genuine and uh, they saw me as a role model. So I'm the sex role model for them. Uh, that they don't, they don't see in their friends and they can't talk about sex with other people. So when they hear me talk about sex in such a positive way and that I embrace it, I'm so comfortable with it, they start to s realize, oh, there's actually somebody who, who is like that. Maybe one day I can be like Martha. And um, that to me is why one of my big, actually my clients are my big inspiration or why I continue work on myself because I want, to, I want to be not just effective in the time that I'm with them. How can I be the most effective in the time that I'm with them by being, not just in what I say, but in my being, my being, in my essence, in every single thing, in every pore, that um, I really, really believe that sex is important, wonderful, fun, sacred, and uh, that we should own our sexuality and continue working on our sexuality, continue healing our hearts, continue loving how to love ourselves before telling other people to love themselves. So if I did that, then I would be a hypocrite.